Welcome to Q3 FY23 Results Conference Call of Dixon Technologies, hosted by ICICI Securities. As a reminder, all the participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star, then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Anirudha Joshi from ICICI Securities. Thank you. Over to you, sir. Yeah. Thanks, Ryan. On behalf of ICICI Securities, we welcome you all to Q3 FY23 Results Conference Call of Dixon Technologies India. We have with us senior management represented by Mr. Atul Lal, Vice Chairman and Managing Director, and Mr. Saurabh Gupta, Chief Financial Officer. Now I hand over the call to the management for initial comments, and then we will open the floor for question and answer session. Thanks, and over to you, sir. Thanks very much, uh, Anirudh. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Atul Lal, and we also have on call today uh, CFO Saurabh, Saurabh Gupta. Yeah, good evening, everyone. Thank you very much for joining this earnings call for the quarter ended December 2022. Coming to our overall performance for the third quarter, consolidated revenues for the quarter ended December 31, 22 was INR 2408 crores against INR 3074 crores in the same period last year. That's a degrowth of 22%. Consolidated EBITDA for the quarter was INR 140 crores against INR 104 crores in the same period last year, a growth of 10%. Consolidated tax for the quarter was INR 52 crores against INR 46 crores in the same period last year, a growth of 12%. We are pleased to report a strong performance on the margins front in this quarter, wherein the margins have expanded by 130 bits year on year. This is led by a change in sales mix, operating leverage, cost of it optimization, and efficiency measures across all businesses, and continued implementation of the strategic price hikes across our ODM business of washing machine and lighting. Another highlight was the strong free cash flow generation post capex of 114 crores in the first nine months of the current fiscal. We have further strengthened our balance sheet with reduction in gross debt by the piece 223 crores in the same period, with net debt now of the 68 crores, with net debt to equity of 0 0.06 as on 31st December 2022. We are targeting to reduce our debt by another NR 50 crores before March 31st, 23, and save almost 22 crores in interest costs annually. Our balance sheet strength and enough credit line from banks enables us to invest in long-term development of our business. Our basic approach always has been to capital policy that emphasizes on return on invested capital and financial stability. We have successfully improved our ROC and ROE to 26.3% and 28.3% respectively as on 31st December 22. And we feel confident that same would keep improving in the current quarter and in the coming years on account of more debt reduction, working capital efficiency, and improved earnings. There is huge focus on cash and working cycle and working capital management. Working capital days is stored and positive one day at the end of the December quarter. Our cost optimization initiatives and proven working capital management will help us to sustain growth, profitability, and a strong balance sheet. We strongly believe we have a platform to sustain strong revenue growth moving forward through strengthening in the overall demand environment and addition of more customers, includes, including some large accounts and mobile business. Now I'll share with you the performance and the strategy in each of our businesses going forward. Consumer Electronics, the revenue for the quarter 
were 864 crores with operating profit of INR 26 crores and 3.1% operating profit margin, which is an expansion of 90 pips year on year. Year on year revenues were low about 39%, led by 17% lower volumes as Diwali was one month earlier last year. Also significant correction in prices of open sale in the international market. Similarly, in nine months, despite 16% growth in volumes, here on air, the menu declined by 21%. We have the largest capacity in India with annual capacity of 6 billion sets, including backward integration in LCM and SMT lines, and catering to almost 35% of India's reforms. Our JDM business with our anchor customers is going strong, and we are in active discussion with other ex existing customers to offer OD and JDM solutions. We have closed the ODM sub-licensing rights with Google related to Android and Google TV, which will open up a lot of opportunities for us. And 65% of Indian market is on this platform. We should be able to roll out the same by Q1 of next financial year. As a part of our backward integration strategy, we will be starting injection molding in the segment for deepening our television manufacturing in the current quarter. Uh, of this fiscal. We are also exploring newer products such as commercial displays used in public advertising and information displays and interactive board for youth and educational institutions in this particular business. In lighting, revenues for the quarter were 263 crores with operating profit of 24 crores with an operating margin of 9.1%. An expansion of 90 bits in few to numbers, 9 more we have been netting. We were able to increase operating margins to combination of reductions in input prices, calibrating pricing action, inventory planning, and value engineering. Apart from sluggish demands, reasons for lower revenues here in our is a reduction in commodity prices, freight rates, and migration of value global technology from driver base to DOD as driver and board, which are 18 to 20 percent lower than the earlier technology uh, SKUs. We are India's largest ODM player in lighting and have the largest capacity in various SKUs. In LED bulb, we have a capacity of 10 million, which is 45% of the engine requirement. We already have expanded the annual capacity in baby batteries to 50 million and downlighters to 18 million. We are getting into new product categories like the starting strips and rope lighting, which will be launched in March 23. We'll also launch professional lighting products in the course of 23 24. Our first supply is against exports to a uh, new customer in UAE has been executed in Q3, and we have already received the repeat orders for Q4. Uh, in Q3, we completed the technology acquisition of Bluetooth Mesh technology and work in process progress Wi Fi solution for the smart lighting from IBAN Eliminations, a premier smart lighting company. New product leveraging acquisition will be launched in Q1 of next year. We have hired Kunal Fawzri as head of R&D from Lighting Solutions. He's one of the most experienced R&D leaders in lighting industry in India. We are also in the process of strengthening R&D further in the space of smart lighting and professional products. We have also started investing under the PLI scheme for LED lighting components in line with the backward integration strategy, which will make us even more competitive. The new plant for LED lighting components in Dehradun will be again operational in March 23. The capital employed in this business has been reduced by 161 crores year and hour on account of huge focus on current asset investment. Home appliances, revenues for the quarter were 244 crores with an operating profit of 25 crores, and that is 10.3% operating profit margin. The margins have improved both year on year in QMQ, led by passing on the impact of commodity costs and exchange rate fluctuations to customers improved operating leverage and cost optimization measures. We have 160 old models of old models in semi-automatic category ranging from 6 to 14 kg with an annual capacity of 2.4 million. We have added more customers like Bosch, TC and Omeda in the semi-automatic category. In fully automatic category, we have a capacity of 0.6 million with 96 variants across 6.5 to 11 kg with Bosch as an anchor customer. In addition to Bosch, we have started manufacturing for Lloyd, Roma, PCL, Akai, Oneida, Acer, and Japanese customer, Sharp. We are targeting more than 100% growth in this business in the next financial year. 
We will be introducing more designs and new features in those categories of semi and fully automatic and increasingly invest on making the segment more R&D driven to serve industry with the latest innovative technologies. The order book in this vertical, in this business for the upcoming quarters looks very healthy. Mobile phones and EMS devices. Revenues for the quarter were 913 crores with an operating profit of 33 crores. That's 3.6% operating margins. We have got some large orders from Nokia for feature phones. We are working on two large customer acquisitions in this vertical, which I had shared in our last interface also. We are likely to close the first account in a week's time and expecting the second account to conclude by end of the current quarter. Both these customers can potentially add almost 6,000 crores in revenues annually. We have started the construction activity in a new five-acre integrated facility in Noida, where in phase one, we will be constructing almost 400,000 square feet. We have hired a very senior person as our R&D head from mobile phones from branded mobile company who will build a team of engineers and a lab in Hyderabad. The Gerody surveillance systems, Dixon share of 50% of the venue is 118 crores with an operating profit of 2 crores. We are going in for further capacity expansion from 10 billion per annum to 14 billion per annum and we are relocating our campus from Purukati to move the electronic manufacturing for cluster where we have taken 200,000 square feet constructed facility into operational by March 23. Operating profit and margin in this business are down year and year in quarter and quarter, mainly due to shifting expenses and duplication of fixed cost structure. Telecom and networking products are separate facility in Noida, which got operational in December 22, and we are supposed to achieve thresholds of capex and minimum revenue in the first year as per the PLI guideline. Airtel is the anchor customer and there is strong market share in ONT and set of boxes. We have already supplied almost 0.6 million ONT to Airtel uh, since we started manufacturing for them. We have also died a very large order of HD wrapper set of box from Airtel and the mass production to start by Q2 of next year. Also, we have one large business of Android set of boxes in partnership with Global Odeon. The development work has started mass production to start by Q2 of this next business. This is potential to grow even to other geographies outside India. We are also in active discussions in this business with some other large Google brands for existing and new product categories. We are also building a team for joint R&D with our partners to support our end customers from India. Laptops, tablets, and IT hardware. The government is expected to come out with the revised PLI scheme to IT hardware, which is much more attractive and higher incentive outlay. We will be participating in this PLI. Inverter controller board for air conditioners, a 40-60 JB with Rexel, Japan, to manufacture these boards of air conditioners for Daikin. Uh, a new facility under the PLI scheme has been set up. Uh, the JV company is a beneficiary under the PLI. We'll make a total investment of 51 crores, and the addiction share is 20 crores over a period of five years, and we've already achieved the capex threshold in the PLI in the current financial year. Variables and variables for both brands, we get a uh, revenue of 85 crores in Q3 and in nine months, 230 crores uh, of the current fiscal. Presently, we are manufacturing PWS and neck bands with more SKUs like Bluetooth speakers and a smart watch with the data in the new facility, which will be operational by March 23. In line with our strategy to deepen the level of manufacturing, the SMP for PCP will also be done in house in the next financial year. In addition, we'll be manufacturing TWS and the smart watches for Samsung with a dedicated plant in Q4 of the current financial year. A refrigerator, we have started the construction on 20 acres of land in Ethernoida, where we are creating a capacity of 1.2 million PC refrigerator under various uh, sizes of 190 liters to 235 liters. We have positive response from a lot of global and national brands, and we expect the trial production to start in 2 2 of 23 24. I would like to now stop here, and uh, me and Saurabh are there to respond to your question. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone. 
If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Our first question is from the line of Bhumika Nair from Dam Capital. Please go ahead. Bhumika, your line is unmuted. You could proceed with your question. Hello. Yes, sir. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. So the first question is on the TV segment. Uh, while there would have been some realization decline, which has led to the uh, revenue decline, but can you give some color on what has happened in terms of volumes and how is the industry demand and um, you know how are we seeing the segment going ahead, particularly with the Google Android license coming up? You know where are we seeing the uh, customer ramp up? So that's my first question. So, so Bumika, let me share the volume numbers and I request Mr. Lal to answer the question on the Google and Android license. See, one of the reasons why there is a decline in Q3, one of course the Diwali last year was in November 1st week. Uh, this year the Diwali was in October 24th. So clearly the peak sales for Diwali happened in Q2 and we had a very good Q2 as far as uh, TV sales was concerned both in terms of volumes. Uh, so if you look at the volume numbers in Q3, uh, this year we did 6.9 lakh TVs as against 8.3 lakh TVs, same period last year. But if you look at the nine months performance, uh, there is a growth of 16% and we have done 26.7 uh, lakh TVs in the first nine months, which is a growth of almost 16% as against same nine months of last year. Now the major reason, of course, one is of course the volume degrowth, mainly because of the Diwali impact. And second is, of course, uh, another uh, another 25, 28 percent kind of an impact which we are seeing on account of the open sale prices coming down. So just to sh uh, share some numbers on the weighted average selling price that we had in Q3 last year was somewhere around 16,000 or crore, mainly because the open sale prices were higher, and it's a prescriptive business to pass on in the selling prices. And now the average selling price for the complete portfolio of TV has come down to almost 11 and a half thousand rupees. So there has been a significant uh, pricing degrowth. Uh, which has also led to uh, the revenue be growth overall. So, Bhumika, taking forward uh, what Saurabh has shared, uh, as far as the demand is concerned, uh, we are fairly confident uh, against the volume of 2.9 billion that we did last fiscal. Mm -hmm. We should have around 20% growth in volume terms in the current fiscal. Uh, the market itself is not growing, but uh, we're going to have this growth because of certain new customer acquisitions and a larger share of pie of some of our anchor customers. So we should be closing it around 3.5 to 3.6 million uh, in the current fiscal, which is a significant growth. ramp up in the fourth quarter from the current levels of third quarter of 6.9. Yeah. So, responding to your uh, question of the business opportunity on the Google side, first on the on the technical side, the product launch, we are targeting sometime in Q2. The trials will take place in Q1. The licensing agreements have been closed, and the various technology partners have been aligned with. So, Q2 this should launch. Uh, one project has been signed with one of the brands. Uh, please appreciate that almost 65% of the TV sold in India uh, are on Google and Android platform. So we feel that over a year, year and a half in front of us, the opportunity pool in front of us is possibly of additional 1 million sets. That's what one is targeting through this route. The second, you would have seen the financial matrix that the margin profile is significantly expanded. The main reason for it is a step-by-step -step migration to owning the design. So these are two directions we are pursuing in LED televisions. Sure, sir. Sir, on the second question is on the mobile segment. Um, you know, we've seen a decline even on a YOI basis where we've been, at that point in time, we were kind of still ramping up the Motorola volume. Uh, while there is some decline in terms of the industry demand, etc. 
uh, but it's just surprising to see such a sharp QOQ kind of uh, uh, decline in revenues. Uh, so if you can throw some color of, you know, how has been the decline in the Motorola volumes per se in the current quarter. And number two, if there is a delay in terms of client additions that we are likely to add into the current quarter, um, you know, we were talking of earlier, uh, uh, you know, revenue of about five or thousand crores in mobiles. What is the risk to that number now? And as we scale up into the next year, uh, what could be the risk from if there is a delay in adding any client? So, Motorola volumes have been under pressure uh, in the current quarter, uh, uh, which has impacted our performance in mobile business. Uh, however, in this business also, because of huge focus on generating more efficiency and cost optimization, the margins have expanded. Uh, Motorola, we are in discussions with them. All the volumes are going to pan out, and I think the next year business plan we're going to be concluding in a couple of weeks' time. They're assuring us that more export is going to come in, but let's we can watch on that. On the new customer additions, uh, one customer agreement, as I shared in my opening remarks, is going to close in a week's time. Uh, we are there. It's all been done. And we feel that it's going to get fructified as far as the revenue is concerned in Q2 of the next business. Uh, the other business that we are talking about uh, to another large customer, we feel that it's going to take some more time. We are confident that we should conclude the other large customer's engagement also uh, within the current quarter. As far as revenue is concerned, on the mobile side, what we are targeted for 5,000 crores. I think we should end up doing around 4,000 crores, somewhere between 3,800 to 4,000 crores in the current business. Uh, in the next, now these two new customers should add for us at least 5,000 crores in the next financial year. That's what we are looking at. Sure, sir. And just lastly, what are the Motorola volumes in the current quarter? In the current quarter, we are expecting the Motorola volumes to be around 800, 800 to 850. Okay, sir. I have more questions. I'll come back in the queue. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question comes from the line of Aditya Bharatiya from Investec. Please go ahead. Um, hi, good evening, sir. Um, so my first question is uh, on mobile phones and lighting verticals. Uh, uh, wherein we were anticipating an improved performance in quarter three when we had last spoken uh, after, after the Q2 numbers. Uh, so, so, but but the performance obviously has been far weaker than that. So, just want to understand what really changed so dramatically, uh, uh, and and the indications or the order book that we get from customers uh, is is that a very very broad indication on which customers have a lot of flexibility to be uh, downgrading their numbers. So, in lighting, uh, uh, one, of course, uh, the demand has been slow. The second, the unit value has significantly reduced the migration from driver-based technology to POV. Uh, wherein there is a reduction in unit value of almost 15 to 18 percent. Third, there is always an internal reason. Uh, so it's a combination of three which has led to this Q3 number. Although a lot of internal work was done on value engineering, uh, current asset management, working capital, which has led to the margin of expansion, uh, margin expansion to 9.1 percent, and we have reached the same level where we used to be uh, year, year and a half back. And now the main thing is to grow the revenues. So in the current quarter. The revenue has already started touching more than 100 crores a month. Uh, we are in the range of somewhere around 110, 115 crores a month. So we are recovering. So I think, and uh, I think with addition of a uh, uh, new product portfolio and some new large customers, today Abel is a, a very large strategic, a new strategic customer for us. We are going to be on a reasonably good growth path with decent margins in this business in the forthcoming fiscal. 
Sure, sir. And, and, and on the mobile phone side, is it that the slowdown was very stark and nobody saw it coming? Uh, or is it that uh, uh, Motorola is changing some sourcing strategy? So, mobile said there has been a slowdown and uh, we, we, we're getting a sense of it. And the key to growth in this business is the new customer it is. And uh, that's what we're working on. As I shared, that one customer gave almost closed, which is seven days away from signing. And uh, another customer, which we're confident about, I think we're going to close in the current quarter itself by March end. Sure, sir. And uh, when you speak about this 5,000 to 6,000 crore rupees of revenue potential, uh, firstly, is that for next year or given that uh, we will be starting this business uh, progressively o o over a few quarters, uh, a lesser number is likely to be realized? And secondly, this 5,000 to 6,000 crores will be what proportion of the overall business that these customers may be doing in India if it's, uh, if it's a domestic contract? So in the, in the current fiscal, we should close somewhere around 4,000 crores in mobile revenue. We feel that in the next year, uh, because it's going to take certain time to launch the products for the new customers, we should be able to double it to around 8,000 Okay. And so what proportion uh, would this, whatever, five 6,000 crore rupees of annual revenue potential for these two customers B of the overall business that they would do in India. Sorry, just come again, please. So just trying to assess the size of these customers. Graduated shift, uh, the potential is much, much larger. But I think first Dixon has to uh, prove on its credentials and deliver on the committed deliverables. Uh, then the scope is much larger, PP So, as I said, the opportunity is much, much larger, but initially, like the way it happens with us across the business and across customers, it starts with lower volumes. Uh, we have to show our execution, delivery, and then gradually take the numbers increase. So, please be please assured that the opportunity size and the customers that we are working with are much, much larger, and definitely they should grow year on year. Understood. And just one last question. These customer, this contract is mainly for domestic market or there is an export limit involved as well? So one customer is a, is a combine of both domestic and export services and another customer is mainly domestic focus to start with. Understood. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question comes from the line of Nikit Shah from Motilal Oswal AMC. Please go ahead. Yeah, <clears throat> thanks for the opportunity. Uh, I had two questions. Uh, one is the new mobile order that we just talked about. Uh, just wanted to understand what kind of margins uh, will that order increment, on that incremental revenue can we generate? Will it be at far more competitive margins uh, as compared to what the blended margins of the business is? Uh, so, Nikhil, those margins will be definitely higher than what we are doing today uh, because yeah, so those commercials have been partly negotiated. So, and plus, uh, the fixed cost gets absorbed of the top of the team there on a much larger revenues. Of course, you need to build a bigger team, but clearly there's some kind of fixed cost which gets absorbed uh, over the larger revenues. So, you'll have the benefit of operating leverage also kicking in. So, yes, the margins in both these customers will be much, much better than what we are currently doing. And uh, I'm assuming the working capital cycle doesn't change uh, in the new order versus the existing mobile that, order. That, that, uh, that focus will always be there. Initially, yes, there can be some deployment of working capital, but once the business ramps up and stabilizes, the working capital intensity will not be there. Got it. Got it. And the second question was, uh, you know, within your existing segments across the board or the segment that you're present, uh, as we as we stand today, do you think there is likely to be any downward in estimates within the existing customers, uh, either due to slowdown or change in strategy from that customer? Uh, the reason why I'm asking this question is, well, while new customer addition is obviously an area of growth for you, uh, but the existing client also, when it declines, it kind of compensates uh, uh, for for the higher growth. Uh, so just trying to understand that. Uh, you know, uh, one one is on the new customer addition, there is clearer tailwind, uh, but do you think within existing customers, is there any scope for downgrades? Thanks. So, Miket, uh, uh, taking you through the various businesses, 
we shared with you uh, that in the mobile current customers business there has been a pressure uh, there has been a challenge taking you through the other businesses starting with led televisions uh, the current order book looks good we are also working on some new customer clients with the current order book also we going to have almost 18 to 20% growth in washing machine we have an extremely good order book with existing customers as well in the current fiscal in semi automatic we are going to grow from 1.1 billion that we did in 21 22 to around 1.5 billion in the current fiscal <coughs> and uh, Uh, this trend is going to continue. We feel that we are going to have almost 15% growth in the next fiscal with the current customers as well. Uh, in the new category of FATL, obviously the base was small, so we are going to be doing almost 160k in the current uh, fiscal, and this quantity should double in the next fiscal. Uh, in lighting business, we had a challenge, but please be rest assured, we are. on an extremely strong recovery path and month on month and quarter on quarter we'll keep on going in our existing businesses itself in lighting uh, then we have security surveillance systems security surveillance systems is going to take have a challenge for a quarter or so because they're shifting the campus to a new site so there will be some additional cost and the volumes are going to be fairly steady with a single digit growth then we have the new businesses in new businesses uh uh wherein we are in wearables wearables yeah there is going to be a uh, significant growth because we are going to be adding new scus for both then in telecom devices that is a new business we just started with airtel and that's also going to be high growth business so this is going to be the trend we feel confident about our existing business as well except for mobiles <clears throat> wherein we are working on new customer acquisition Got it. Got it. Perfect. Thank you so much, and I'll come back and give. Thank you. Our next question comes from the line of Ankur from HDFC Life. Please go ahead. Uh, yes. Yeah. <coughs> Hi, sir. Good evening. Uh, thanks for your time, as always. Uh, so, one, uh, if you could just remind us on your top line and margin guidance for uh, 23. Obviously, we are very close to completing the year, and uh, also overall, any guidance for 24 on top line and margin. Yes, yeah, so Ankur. Uh, we did around 9,100 crore, uh, 9,200 crore revenues in the first nine months. Mm-hmm. Uh, broadly, uh, we should end quarter four somewhere between 3,000 to 3,500 crore of revenues. So that should take us to broadly uh, somewhere between 12,200 to 12,000 crore, 12,700 crore revenues. So that is the broad guidance. But I see that the margins in Q4 should also be uh, on, if not on the similar lines, at least. Much higher than the quarter one and quarter two numbers. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we are hoping to close that closer to four percent kind of margins. Um, as far as the guidance for next year is concerned, clearly we have a, a big growth coming in all the verticals of wearable, wearables, telecom, uh, TV as we mentioned can be a fifteen to eighteen percent growth. Uh, fully automatic washing machine can be hundred percent growth for us because the business just started to ramp up now. Um, Mobile, as we had guided for, we're looking for this new customer account acquisitions, and this would really add to our top line. Uh, so, yeah, so somewhere between, I would say, next year it can be somewhere between 90 to 40,000 crore kind of revenues. Uh, somewhere between 90 to 41,000 crore kind of revenues. But we are in the process. In the next couple of months, we'll be doing a budgeting exercise for next year, uh, and I'll be in a better position to share those numbers with you. But yeah, this is the broad numbers that we should look target for next year. Okay, sir. Uh, second, uh, sir, and uh, not uh, just for Dixon, but for the industry as a whole. Uh, you know, we've been hearing of a slowdown when we look at GSK numbers, for example, for ACs, revs, washers. Uh, you know, the numbers which are out for October, November. You know, and I understand the Diwali piece being uh, slightly, uh, you know, earlier last year. But still, you know, we see, uh, you know, single to high, single digit decline. Uh, as you said, even on TVs, we've uh, you know not seen any growth, at least on the industry side. Uh, so, so uh, you know, how are you seeing, at least for the near term? So, I understand 24, maybe you obviously because of new customer additions, etc. Dixon may see growth, but on the overall industry, if you could talk about some of the larger segments, 
Uh, what are you hearing uh, from your end customers? So I'm uh, kind of sanguine about it. Mm -hmm. What you are saying is uh, is correct. So we have to keep watching and let's see how it evolves. So we can't be absolutely gumbo about it. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's going to be guarded kind of growth in existing businesses. Uh, in mm -hmm. Nixon's case, what is extremely important is to run the existing businesses uh, much more efficiently, acquire mm -hmm. new customers, uh, widen the product portfolio, and ensure that the new businesses that we have entered into are executed well. That's going to be the key trigger for the key score. Right, right. And I'm sorry, sorry uh, just uh, on the lighting piece, if you could remind us, I think that's been weak for quite some time. So, uh, and, and, and I know that's for the industry as a whole, but what's really driving that? Uh, is it, uh, 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 the, I mean, uh, is it that the penetration levels are high and, uh, because you also spoke about some drop in pricing. I'm sorry, I missed that. So what's, what's kind of driving this weakness in lighting again? So in lighting, uh, uh, the field, uh, confident that we are on a correct recovery path. Uh, we're going to have growth uh, in value turnover. We're going to be adding new SKUs. Mm -hmm. We're going to be like, uh, launching the new product of strip and product lighting uh, in the current quarter itself. And we have built our R&D team for professional luminous, which are going to be launched in a couple of quarters. We're going to start leveraging our acquisition on the smart lighting front. There's a lot of effort going into value engineering and cost optimization, which has led to the expansion of operating margins from 6.7% to 9.1%. We feel that we can sustain these margins. So we feel that lighting, we're on the right track and the right steps have been taken and team has been built to put us in a growth path. Undoubtedly, the, the current year has been a challenge, but please be just sure that we are on the right path. And this quarter itself will be significant. Okay, fair. fair. And just one last one on cell phones again. And, uh, you know, uh, given I think our earlier guidance was a number closer to 5,000 plus, now we're talking of around 38 to 4,000 crores for this year. Uh, and as, as you mentioned, right, Motorola volumes have been a little weak. But what's, what's uh, really driving that? Is it just their end market where they sell things going slow? Uh, are you just trying to understand a little more. Uh, and do you think that's going to come back uh, next year? Or, you know, uh, will volumes remain low from Motorola and therefore uh, a lot of the, you know, uh, incremental sales has to come from these two new customers? How, how should we kind of uh, view that? In Motorola's case, uh, their market share in India has sustained. Mm. Mm. But what we were expecting the volumes to come from exports, exposed to US, mm. Mm -hmm. that did not materialize. Because the global market, particularly the US market on the smartphone side, and in Motorola's case, most of the export was to operators, those numbers very dwindled. That has impacted us. Mm. Uh, we are uh, discussing with Motorola for next year's budget. We have mm. not concluded the numbers. Uh, mm. we are hoping that numbers are going to be decent. Let's see. But we're not still concluded numbers. Uh, mm -hmm. The other customers and new acquisition I've shared with you. I yeah. feel confident that these new customer acquisitions are going to uh, materialize. That's going to happen very soon. I understand. Okay, so I understand. Okay, great. Uh, that's very helpful. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Our next question comes from the line of Sonali Salgaukar from Jefferies. Please go ahead. So thank you for the opportunity. So my first question is we have seen a good rebound in margins. What was the quantum of price hikes that we have taken on an average in this quarter? So it, uh, it basically a value engineering initiative, Sonali, and also cost optimization, uh, reducing the manufacturing cost, and also passing on certain increasing in the commodity prices to the customer. It takes certain time. Uh, we have shared with you that in ODM business, there's a certain lag in that. But in the last quarter, we have been able to do that. And that has led to the increase in operating margins in the businesses like washing machines and lighting. Got it. So in our ODM, it's still at about 30% of the sales, right? 
ODM is around, uh, in the first nine months, Smiley, uh, ODM is around 24% of our skills. Okay, got it. Yes, and last? very large contributor to our profitability now. So almost 48% of our operating profits are coming from ODM business. So last year, uh, it was around 20 odd percent. So first of all, it is 20 has moved to 24 and on a much higher revenues. So in absolute numbers, the ODM numbers are going very fast. Got it. And lastly, on the export, what has, uh, what, uh, can you quantify our export revenue for the first nine months? Uh, so my export revenues is majorly Motorola and a small bit in lighting. Uh, we did a, a, we had an export order to UE markets for lighting business. Uh, so broadly, I may not remember the exact number, but it should be somewhere in the range of uh, 700 odd crores, 700 to 800 odd crores. Got it. And how much do we expect to uh, increase that over the coming year? So this year we should close at somewhere around 1100 odd crores. And hopefully by next financial year, as we mentioned, that uh, we are waiting for Motorola to give the guidance on exports for next year. So that should increase the revenues for next year on export side. And one of the new customer acquisitions that we're looking for will be both for the domestic market as well as for exports. And hopefully, in lighting business also, we should crack some more uh, accounts uh, on lighting. So yes, uh, my sense is that number should grow at a good pace. Very difficult to quantify right now. But so uh, my sense is, Sonali, that it will be somewhere in the range of around 2,300, 2,500 crores next year. Got it. Let's see how the Motorola plan pans out, but that's what my sense is. Got it. So and lastly, you guided for rupees 8,000 crore sales in mobile phones in FI24, right? Okay. Thank you, sir. This is helpful. Thank you. Our next question comes from the line of Kayur from ICICI Prudential Life Insurance. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for the time. Uh, sir, first question uh, on the profitability of two or large ODM segments, lighting and washing machine. So probably despite lower volume is the kind of margin we have seen for Q3. Uh, so with improving trajectory, should we assume that this kind of uh, EBIT margin or EBITDA margin uh, are more sustainable or probably we can improve from this margin? That is first question. So we feel now that in our lighting, in our ODM businesses of lighting and washing machine, we'll be somewhere in this range only in the coming months. Uh, that's, we feel that we are back to where we were and we should be able to sustain it. And also there has been an expansion in margins on the PV side because of larger volume of the ODM, JDM uh, business. That also we should be able to sustain. Okay. Uh, second, sir, on the growth side for two segments of TV and lighting, so with TV, in TV with uh, this addition of JDM as well as uh, RO, I mean, uh, Android licensing, uh, 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 and on the export trust on the lighting, so what kind of growth do we expect in these two segments? I got confused in TV since uh, you talked about 15% kind of growth in TV. I think earlier you had guided for much higher growth. So if you can just clarify growth trajectory for these two segments. So what one feels is that uh, this year we should close at somewhere between 3.5 to 3.6 million, uh, uh, which is an 18 to 20% volume growth. We feel that in the next financial year, the kind of order book we are looking at, we should be able to have around 15% volume growth. And a large portion of it is going to be on the ODM business. And also some contribution will start from the Google kind of business, from Google kind of things that I am thinking. So next year we are targeting to close at somewhere around 4.2 to 4.3 million. Uh, okay, okay. Got it. And on the lighting side? Uh, and just the lighting one side, more. Uh, the revenue uh, to... run rate had uh, shrunk. Uh, we mm -hmm. had a revenue run rate in the last quarter of around uh, of around. Uh, 75 to 80 crores a month. We are back to a run rate in the current quarter of 110 crores. We feel that we should be able to generate a growth of around 15 to 30 percent from the next fiscal. Uh, sir, just follow up on lighting. So there were two export opportunities uh, through our anchor customer in lighting. Uh, and second is the wide level export to some of the developed nations, uh, which can be 
a large opportunity uh, more of a, more of a bulk business so if you can divide uh, our export opportunities uh, in these two subcategories and uh, where are we uh, in both of these journeys so uh, uh, a lot of work is being done uh, for the developed markets of us and uh, and europe uh, we feel that uh, we are going to have breakthroughs both in led bulbs as well as the ceiling lights uh, in us and in europe we feel that these breakthroughs are going to happen in the next quarter and the execution should start on 23 uh, initially it's going to be a normal a small number but the opportunity pool is very very large uh, at this stage to put a number to it is slightly premature okay noted uh, thanks a lot and all the very best thank you thank you our next question comes from the line of gopal navandar from sbi life insurance please go ahead uh, hi sir thanks a lot for the opportunity <clears throat> So my question is on the guidance. Uh, in the beginning of the year, we started with 17,000 crore uh, and uh, kept on reducing it uh, almost every quarter. And even in December, when we came on the tariff region and guided for 14,500 to 15,000 crore revenue for financial year 23, and uh, now we are guiding for 12,700 crore kind of revenues for current financial year. Is there just you know improvise on our just you know improvise on our forecast or plans uh, so that uh, we have a, a better handle on the guidance? So undoubtedly uh, we appreciate uh, uh, your 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 input, uh, but please appreciate in 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 our nature of industry. Uh, we are a B2B company, and uh, we are closely associated uh, with the budgeting exercise of our customers. On the basis of their inputs, we plan our capacities and we plan our numbers. And uh, that guidance and forecasting is prepared on that basis. However, I appreciate and uh, your 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 input and advice. is well appreciated and well noted surely sir second question is on uh, you know on the television segment is there any uh, big revenue loss from any particular customer uh, is there any uh, big uh, change in the volumes for zaumi or something yeah so shomi volumes uh, uh, have not exactly grown as per the plan they think is a decline It's not declined, but it is not grown. So, Gopal, it would be flat this year. They would not have grown. Our major growth this year of uh, this 80 to 20 percent growth in volumes will majorly come from Samsung. And even next year, we are expecting some more volumes from Samsung because uh, on some higher category uh, TVs as well, and some more customer acquisitions. Uh, also, led by the Google and Android license. And do we expect any decline going ahead in the Xiaomi volume, or uh, we expect to maintain the volumes uh, from the Xiaomi? Well, let's wait and watch because Xiaomi is also doing its internal budgeting. We have not heard from them the next year's budget. Okay. In the next couple of months, we'll get a lot of clarity on our customer budgets, and accordingly, we will factor uh, in our budgets as well. Sure, sir. And uh, on the sir, uh, uh, are there any PLI incentives which we have booked in this current quarter and the nine month? If you can qualify the number. Uh, uh, yeah, so we would have booked the PLI incentive. Uh, but I can get back to you. I would not be remembering this number, but I can get back to you after this week. A small number. It would be somewhere around eight to nine or crores, probably. Okay, okay, and uh, uh, sorry, I'm uh, not sure whether we already discussed on the export side on the lighting, uh, or uh, because I think uh, the commentary uh, in the past has been there are uh, large opportunities and uh, we are very close on uh, you know some orders. Uh, if you can just give some color on that uh, lighting exports. So, well, I shared that. Uh, Business with Middle East is already started. Okay. 
have executed the first order and the repeat orders uh, have started pouring in. So we have a consistent business for the Middle East market. And uh, we are in uh, final stages of negotiation for US market. Uh, we are expecting some breakthroughs uh, in March or early next quarter. And the execution will start from Q2 of next quarter. Uh, and if I'm right, uh, we said that uh, that uh, uh, the customer which we are concluding uh, in the current, coming week, the revenues will start from Q2 of next year. That's right. That's right. Yes. Uh, so in in that case, uh, the whatever like revenue or projections or uh, estimates we have for next year, it will be back ended. That's right. Sure, sir. Thanks a lot for this opportunity. Thank you. Our next question comes from the line of Girish Achipalya from Morgan Stanley. Please go ahead. Thanks for the opportunity. So, sir, uh, in the event that you are able to close uh, the customer in the next one week, and uh, it probably takes slightly more longer time for the second customer on mobile side, what could be the incremental revenue be for from this for customer that you close in the next one week, approximately? So it's going to take some time to ramp up, and uh, that's what I had indicated. Uh, that in the current fiscal, we close the mobile revenue somewhere around 4,000 crores. So because it's going to take some time to ramp up in the next fiscal with the addition of new customers, and uh, expecting Motula revenues to remain almost the same, and we should double that to around 8,000 crores. No, my question was if you were not able to convert both, but at least one. So the first one, which is likely to happen sooner. In that situation, one, what could be so the one? Customer order? one should generate next year around 1,000 to 1,200 crores because it will start around Q2, and the customer two will generate around 2,500 to 3,000 crores. Understood. And then, sir, just in terms of uh, uh, CAPEX, uh, what is the outlook for this year and next year, please? Yes, yeah, so great. This year, nine months, we have done a CAPEX of almost 280 crores, and broadly, we will uh, do another. 80 to 90 crores of capex in Q4, uh, mainly for a refrigerator project. So we should close this year around uh, around 380, uh, 360 to 380 crores of capex. I think so. The plans for next financial year are still are getting made. I will be in a better position to guide in a, by March, by the month of March. Uh, but broadly, it should be lower. It should be lower than what we have done this year as well as last financial year. Uh, but so my by broad senses, it should be in the range of 200 to 250, around 250 to 260 crores. So, CAPEX would be lower despite two mobile customers potentially getting added? Yeah, yeah. So, those are customer accounts, the asset terms are significantly higher. In terms of CAPEX investments and all, it will not be that much. So, mobile is one business where the asset terms are significantly higher. And if you could uh, put some color around margins for uh, mobile business. I think uh, it was um, stronger. So how, how does this kind of continue into next year, uh, given that so you're looking to add? Nine more? months, the mobile and EMS business, of course, has done around 2.8% margins. Of course, if I, if I remove the EMS business, the mobile ba margins would be somewhere around 2.5%, 2.6%. Of course, the customer ac accounts that we are talking for next financial year should come at a slightly higher margins. Uh, based on the broad commercials that we are we have and we will be agreeing with them, and uh, and also the operating benefit. So yes, uh, this margin should inch up by around, uh, if not more, by at least a 25-30 basis year, year kind of an improvement next year on the mobile business. And this higher margin is driven by lower PNI being given or shared to them, or is it some specific operating leverage or ODM capability or backward integration that you are targeting? So it will be a combination of commercials, uh, including your NBA that you charge on the customer, uh, to the customers, I said, and also the benefit of operating leverage benefit uh, will lead to margin expansion on much higher volumes. And third, uh, what I can say as of now, Greece, those commercials as compared to our existing portfolio will be slightly better. What is the bill discounting number, last question, at the end of this quarter? And uh, what is the rate of interest? number was around 130 or crores. And what is the rate of interest that you pay on the bills discounting? It's somewhere around uh, seven and a half eight percent. Okay, thank you. 
But lot of our interest called Girish is also in accord with the India's adjustment. So of the 15 crore interest that you are seeing for the quarter, uh, 4 crores is on account of the India's adjustment. The rental premises that we have taken, that gets bifurcated between depreciation and interest. So that's more of an accounting uh, uh, entry. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Amber from Nipping Mutual Funds. Please go ahead. Amber, your line is unmuted. You could please proceed with your question. Uh, hello, am I audible? Yeah, yes, sir. Yeah. Hi, sir. This is Amber from Nippon Mutual Fund. Uh, just two questions from my side is one, uh, this year we have seen uh, two major segments have seen a significant uh, cut on the realization, one on the TV side because of open sales and then now lighting way because of the change in technology. Uh, so going forward in all the segments where we operate, uh, do you see anywhere where uh, uh, any change in technology is lead, uh, taking shape which can lead to uh, maybe realization decrease going forward because of efficiency improvement and all. Uh, any any of the segments where we operate, we are seeing any uh, such a potential technology change which can lead to uh, lower ASP. So as of now, uh, 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 no. In fact, it should get to bed. In fact, it should get better only because a fully automatic washing machine, uh, which is at a much uh, the realizations are much higher than the semi-automatic. Uh, those volumes would grow by more than 100% next year is what we are targeting. So clearly the realizations uh, should only go up and we don't foresee any kind of a uh, thing which has happened in open cell, on account of open cell. And even in televisions, uh, the, the, there is uh, a small increase in prices of open cell now. And also the pricing uh, of the LED lighting products has kind of bottomed out. Uh, I don't see any further reduction happening in the unit values there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, secondly, sir, if you can give some color about uh, the progress and numbers on the IT hardware, which is tablet and laptop side, how the uh, tie-up with Acer is progressing, what kind of numbers we are doing and outlook on that line. And also uh, along with that, if you can give some color on is there any opportunity for Samsung smartphones uh, as we are now, as they are, they are moving out of feature phones? So uh, uh, on the smartphone side, uh, can we get any volume from Samsung on that line? So on the IT product side, uh, we were a beneficiary of IT PLI scheme. We achieved both the capex and the revenue threshold. And our anchor customer there was Acer. We continue to manufacture laptops for Acer. Now the government of India is coming out with another PLI scheme, which is much larger in purpose and much more attractive. We're expecting the new PLI scheme in IT hardware to be rolled out in next 30 to 45 days. We will be participating. And uh, Acer is always there as a customer. We are also in dialogue in discussion with some other large global brand. So we're going to be participating in the new PLI of IT hardware. Uh, for Samsung, we are already doing the 4G and 5G phones. In fact, uh, this month itself, we'll be doing more than a million a month. Okay. So just to follow up on this, is uh, if you can give some color on the numbers uh, in terms of laptop this year and next year you're targeting. And secondly, uh, whenever this new uh, IT hardware PLI gets rolled out, so will we get uh, automatic qualification for the same or do we need to apply again for the same, uh, how that will work out? So responding to the second question first, we'll have to apply again. But we are confident that we will be awarded the PLI under the IT hardware, under the scheme two. Uh, second, I think it's slightly premature to put the numbers to it because let the scheme be rolled out and uh, then uh, the contracts with the potential brand is not concluded. So I think slightly early. Got it, sir. Thanks a lot, sir, for, and all the best for the future. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question comes from the line of Pulkit. Putney from Goldman Sachs. Please go ahead. 
Uh, yes, sir. Thanks for taking my questions. So both related questions. I mean, if you look at, if when we look at the Motorola revenue, uh, which you said actually declined, uh, I mean, how do these contracts work? Because we are investing capital into setting up additional cap capacities for these companies. Um, isn't there sort of a committed volume for a particular period? Uh, because I'm just trying to understand how volatile can this this business be, uh, given the fact that it can vary so significantly, you know, on a quarter to quarter basis. So if you could just explain how does our terms with these customers work in terms of, uh, you know, uh, continuity of business? That would be my question number one. The way it works, Kulkid, is that. Uh there are certain committed volumes, and if the customer, I'm talking about especially the relationship that you're mentioning, uh, does not meet the volume commitment, and then he compensates us for capex investment, and also certain fixed cost. But certain other margin and profitability element is not covered under the contract. So you would have seen the margin expansion in this business. So certain cost and amortization of the machinery is covered at a higher rate on the lower volume. That's the way it works. That's the way this contract has been structured. But then you lose out on the profitability. Understood. Understood, sir. So second question is related. Like this is one quarter where on a QOQ basis, Across most segments, we've seen decline, and it's not only a pricing decline, it's a volume decline. But at the same time, our margins across most segments has improved. Now, given that there's an element of fixed cost in the past, you've highlighted uh, you know, uh, a few times that because there's ramp up on certain segments as a result of its margins were lower, it's very counterintuitive that there's volume decline on a QOQ basis. But across all segments, almost, we've seen margin expansion. So if you could, again, you know, explain that a little better, uh, that, you know, is that the degree of value engineering or cost-cutting we are capable of doing, uh, that despite lower volumes, we can actually improve margins? I mean, that will just help us understand this better. So undoubtedly, uh, uh, across our ODM businesses, uh, I first discussed that, namely lighting, and washing machine. Significant initiative uh, has been investing on value engineering, on better sourcing, on passing on the cost increases to the customer, which has led to this margin. Again, we're going to this scale. We're keep on working on this more. This is showing both in lighting and in washing machine. Television larger share of ODM JDM business from the has improved the market. That is the reason. In the case of the EMS business of mobile and wearables, wearables, of effort has gone in for improving the productivity and the operation, which has led to so this is the this is the course we have taken and I think in the last quarter, the team has done well to implement all these initiatives. So, so when the volumes come back, which is what we are expecting in the next year, then these margins could see another leg up or that seems difficult? No, I think uh, there can be a small upside to it. Increasing uh, volume, definitely the operating leverage will keep definitely the margins can expand. Understood, sir. That's uh, helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question for the day. I now hand over the conference to the management for closing remarks. So, thank you so much, Anirudh. Uh, thanks, everyone, for participating in the call. I really appreciate it. All the best. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of ICICI Securities, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.